Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is asthma, again from medical surgical nursing, respiratory illness. Let's get started. Asthma can be a chronic lung disease that creates hypersensitivity reaction and narrows down the airway. It is characterized by wheezing and dyspnea. So asthma can be a sustaining disease, sustaining longer than six months. That creates allergic or hypersensitive reaction. It narrows the airway. It is characterized by wheezing and dyspnea. Types of asthma can be allergic, non-allergic, mixed, exercise-induced, nocturnal, occupational, and many more. We should gather some some of the important some of the important according to exposure, like allergic, like occupational, like exercise-induced which is especially important or especially prevalent in the world. So first is allergic, which symptoms are induced by hyperimmune response due to inhalation of certain, certain allergens. This can be individual because an individual can be allergic to one thing, which can be different to another individual. That allergens which can, be, which can create asthma are mold, pollen, food preservative, and house dust. How different can it be from each other's? There is also non-allergic asthma that is caused due to irritants. Irritants can be weather, weather changes, smoke, drug, deodorants, or cleaning products. So allergens and irritants can be different from each other's, and they also create different kind of sign and symptoms in the body. Also, there is a mixed asthma in which there is symptoms of both allergy and irritation. There is exercise-induced asthma, which is caused due to excess exercise or excess activity. Nocturnal asthma, in which symptoms worsen during night. Occupational asthma, which occurs due to exposure to occupational materials like dust, dye, gas, fume, or rubber latex. Etiology for asthma can be, first of all, genetic factor, which is very important. If there is a history of asthma, there are chances that it will recur. Airborne allergies, the allergens which are present in the air, in the environment. Respiratory infection can be another risk factor, another etiological factor. Excess physical activity for exercise-induced asthma. Air pollutants, irritants, exposure to them. Medicine like beta blockers, medicine like MSCID can also cause asthma. Some of the risk factors are strong emotion and stress. It releases a hormone called as cortisol in the body. Effect of cortisol might lead to asthma. In gastroesophageal reflux disease, the food particles which were supposed to move down to the stomach sometimes reflux, that is opposite movement. It comes up at the tip of the esophagus and reaches the airway. For airway, that particle is a foreign body. It can create allergic effect. Food preservatives, exposure to food preservatives, low birth weight, child having low birth weight is prone to any kind of disease, prone to any kind of infection. Asthma can be one of them. Also, menstrual cycle. Due to menstrual cycle and hormonal changes in the body, some patient faces asthma. Pathophysiology is, first of all, exposure to etiological factors due to which there is inflammation of airway. Whether it is irritant or allergen, it creates inflammation in the airway. Because of inflammation, body faces hypersensitivity now. WBP is activated. Now what happens is, because of the hypersensitivity, body tends to produce something in that place where the allergy has occurred. That narrows the bronchial space. The bronchial space becomes less in less than normal space. After that, what happens is, because of the secretion, there is edema because of the mucus secretion. So, narrowing of bronchial space and edema together makes bronchospasm, which is seen to sign and symptoms. Also, there is production of thick sputum that comes out through the oral cavity. Alveoli becomes hyperinflated 
and on auscultation we can hear a wheezing sound and dyspnea clinical features are persistent coughing and sneezing first persistently patient is coughing and sneezing on auscultation you can hear wheezing sound there can be chest tightness and pain because of the mucus production and edema edema that was in the pathophysiology dyspnea can occur difficulty in breathing thick mucus is produced and a fever of 100 degree f or more is seen in the patient there is chest and abdominal pain because of pain in the muscles respiratory rate increases to meet the demands of the body to meet the increasing demands of the body there might be central sinusitis it starts from peripheral sinusitis but reaches to central nasal flaring can occur and eventually patients feel difficulty in talking or walking this disease can be diagnosed by primarily history taking history taking like family history occupational exposure exercising habit and whatever medicine the patient has been taking previously whether it is hormonal or non hormonal in on physical examination we can find out chest tightness and respiration auscultating the wheezing sound or while auscultating we can find wheezing sound rate of respiration either it is increased or decreased and depth of respiration depth of respiration can be seen through movement of the respiratory muscles also we can find out peak expiratory flow pulse oximetry level of oxygen in the blood chest x ray can be obtained so that the site can be found also blood allergy testing the allergen whichever is causing the allergy can be found through the blood test in medical management first of all what needs to be done is the edema and inflammation needs to be reduced so bronchodilators they come in a first priority to relieve the airway also nsaids can be given for pain management chest pain management mass self stabilizers through inhalers can be given for allergy hormonal medicine corticosteroid for inflammation reduction leukotriene modifiers to reduce discomfort in breathing leukotriene modifiers can always be given when there is narrowing in the space of airway also anticholinergics and beta agonists can be given to relax the airway generally the management can be done through protecting the patient from allergen use of mask use of other protective equipments can be done uh, the secretion can be removed either through nebulization or through deep breathing and coughing prevention of further asthma attack by promoting rest and healthy diet oxygen therapy should be provided if the patient needs oxygen therapy postural drainage can be performed by a professional deep breathing coughing exercise can be taught to the patient for comfort of breathing in nursing management first of all assessment of the lungs should be done every day to monitor the effectiveness of treatment symptoms of hypoxemia should be assessed to find out any deviations from normal breathing Atelectasis should be assessed to modify the mode of treatment. Also, patient should be taught about deep breathing and coughing to widen the airway space and make the breathing easier for patient. Complications can be atelectasis and chronic bronchitis. Thank you so much. Next topic will be discussed in next videos.